Okay, now let's use these least squares ideas to solve a kind of an observability type problem. So let's suppose that we have a state space model with no inputs, um, and we're interested in the, and we, we have some initial condition x0, and we want to estimate this initial condition based on our measurements of the output y. So we can't measure the state x, we can only measure the output y, but we would like to use this to determine the initial condition. And we know that if the system is observable and we have perfect measurements y, this can always be done. A system is uh, observable if every uh, you know, given any output, the initial condition that caused it can be uniquely determined. Um, but we don't have uh, perfect measurements y. Um, we would actually have measurements y subject to some noise. So the, the problem we're sort of interested in here is we have some measurement of our output y from time t is equal to zero to capital T, say it looks something like that. That's our measurement y of t. It's got some noise in there, so maybe, maybe it would be better it's sort of maybe a bit more jaggedy, perhaps, something more like that. Um, and we would like to come up with the best estimate for our initial condition, x0, based on this noisy measurement. Um, so how could we go about formulating this? Well, we could formulate it as a least squares problem as follows. So in the absence of um, disturbances, so if z, let's say z is the response with no noise, we would expect the output of our system for a given initial condition to be given by c e to the a t x zero. So one way to go about quantifying our estimate for the initial condition could be to compare this to what we measure for y. So we could look at the difference between y of t and c e to the a t x zero. And then we could imagine just searching, picking different choices for this initial condition x zero to try to make these as close as possible. So we would want to minimize over all choices of the initial condition x zero to make this difference as small as possible. And how should we measure the size of this error? Well, we should use our two norm friend again. Um, so what's going on here? Well, we've got functions of time, so our norm is going to be given by our infinite dimensional x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared, kind of normal Pythagorean um, notion of length. Um, so here the norm, if we have some function of time, this is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to t of f transpose of t, f of t, dt. So this is just the, the natural analog of the, the, the norm that we are penalizing in the matrix case. Just we have a function here instead of a vector. So we've got like an infinitely long vector. So this is what we would like to solve. Well, this is a linear function that takes an input and produces a function. Um, here we have something that looks like the two norm. So hopefully you can see this looks uncannily similar to the least squares problem that we just looked at, namely minimizing over x the difference between some vector of measurements y and the predictions through some determined by some matrix, uh, let's call that M actually. So we've got a matrix M here, squared. And this is exactly the least squares problem that we just looked at. And this had solution X star is equal to M transpose M to the minus one, M transpose Y. And this, we saw this worked when X and Y were n and m dimensional vectors. Um, and in fact, it will work, the same thing will work even when we have functions um, defined on square, integral, square integrable functions on 
uh, interval 0, capital T. Everything works exactly the same, we just need to work a little bit harder to identify what corresponds to the matrix M, and also the adjoint. Remember, these were the stars, the M stars from the um, lecture on um, that optimal input um, measure of controllability problem that we saw before. So we can kind of see this here. This is our mate playing the role of our matrix M. Um, and what does this thing do? Well, it's some linear mapping. It takes as input a vector. Um, so this is our guess for the initial condition. So remember our fancy notation for that was Rn. This is just an n-dimensional vector of real numbers. And what does this produce? Well, this produces a function. So mx0 is the function c e to the at x0. And so this gives us a function. It's a square integrable function. Um, so it's in our fancy space L2. 0 t. Um, so this is the space of functions that are square integrable on the re yeah, on the domain 0 to capital T. So we have a matrix, well we have our matrix M that takes uh, Rn to these functions and in order to compute the least square solution we need to find the adjoint um, M star which just like m transpose, so if this was rn to rm, the transpose would do rm to rn, the adjoint goes from L2, 0, t, to rn. And the way we go about identifying this adjoint is we look at the inner products in our output space and turn, try to turn them into inner products in our input space. So exactly like we did um, uh, for the control of the controllable problem. So the inner product in our output space, so yeah, uh, in fancy language, yeah, the norm z squared is equal to the inner product of z with itself. And this is equal to the inner product of z e to the a t x zero, and we would like to rewrite this as an inner product where we have m star z and x zero. So let's just kind of go through all of these steps and explain things a little bit more clearly. So the inner product the output space here of functions on L2. So this is so our inner product here this is the integral 0 to t z transpose of t z of t dt so that's the meaning of this inner product if these if we had a z and a w then we would just put a w here here we have another inner product this is a vector this must also be a vector so this inner product this is the so here, the inner product on this side, it's between two vectors. So let's say x0 and z, let's make them different. This is just equal to z transpose x0. So we have the inner product in our output space, the inner pro product in our input space. We have the linear mapping, which takes something in our input space, produces something in the output space. And we need to find the adjoint to compute um, our least squares optimal solution, and the adjoint is defined through this equation here. So we, we take the inner product with z and e to the at x0, the adjoint, so this is our, uh, oh I lost the c, yeah there should be a c there. So here we have the inner product in our output space, we need to turn it into an inner product in the input space and the process of doing of doing that will identify what our adjoint m star is. So maybe it'll be easier when you see the steps. Um, so we're trying to find m star. We know this is how we find m star. So let's just start by writing out this equation here. So that equation, well, we've got the output space in a product. So the integral 0 to t 
And here we've got Z transpose of T with C E to the A T X zero DT. How can we rewrite this in a way that is going to give us an inner product like this one over here? Well, it's actually a bit easier this, this time than last time. So x0, this is just a vector of numbers. So we can pull this through the dt. We can pull this inside of our transpose. Um, so what do we get? We get integral. Oh, we don't need to pull it through the dt, do we? So, so we can rewrite this just like we did before as e to the a transpose t c transpose z of t transpose dt x0. And now, look over here, I shouldn't have used z, let's say that's w. So here we have some vector transposed multiplied by x0. This, after we do the integration, this here, this is just some vector transposed. So we've identified this item, which means that we've actually identified m star. So m, this is m star z. So m star z is this integral here. And if you think back to the um, controllability Example, this is exactly the form of the linear operator that we, we had in, the, in that, that example as well. So m star takes an input function and produces a vector, and it produces it according to this integral. So we found m star. This whole thing is m star z. Um, and so in order to compute our least squares solution, we just need to find m star m, but we now know what m star and m are. So this is m star is the integral 0 to t of um, e to the a transpose t c transpose, and then the vector, and what's the, the input vector to the linear operator, and what is that well, the input to the, this linear operator is just m, and m is c e to the a t. And so this is m star acting on m, which is precisely this term here. So our least squares solution is this inverse multiplied by m star y, um, and we won't bother to write it all out. This thing here, this looks uncannily like the um, controllability Gramian uh, that we saw before. And actually, this thing is called the observability Gramian. And if you remember last time, I said the Gramian that we had shouldn't have had the minus signs. This, so this one's actually in the right form. This really is what is commonly referred to as the um, observability Gramian. And maybe we call it W O of T. So. Yeah, and so once again, we see that the solution to this problem depends on some Gramian, and in particular, we can always find our optimal um, x star just by multiplying the inverse of the observability Gramian with m transpose acting on y. So we would put our measurements y of t in here, perform this integral. And that would give us um, this would give us a vector, and um, then we would just multiply that by omega zero, and that would give us our optimal estimate for the state, um, the initial the initial state. Um, as a final comment here, just like we did with the um, observability, um, the controllability Gramian, we can relate kind of the cost of observing things to this the inverse of the smallest eigenvalue of omega zero of t and kind of come up with a kind of equivalent interpretation in terms of like where the noise 
is the most disruptive um, in terms of being able to estimate the uh, the initial state x zero. So anyway, here we have another example illustrating these least squares techniques on an optimal control problem. Here we considered a problem of trying to optimally estimate an initial condition based on noisy data. And uh, we found the solution um, through our least squares solution um, where we just have to be a little bit more careful about finding adjoints because our matrices or our linear mappings are going from vectors to functions and functions to vectors rather than just vectors to vectors as in the matrix case. Um, but there you go. If you can get your head around all of this, you've really got your hands on an incredibly powerful um, and very, very general optimization technique.